Chapter 9 One Candle It was now August 15th, 1995. Elvis had been gone 18 years. Memphis was aglow with visitors from all over the world. It was August 15th, 1995, and people came from everywhere or so it seemed, to memorialize the passing of Elvis. Oh, yes, it was to be a day for the candlelight vigil. This vigil would begin at sunset and continue through the night into the early hours of the 16th. Music was softly playing, people were milling around, hawkers were selling their wares to the fans, I must say, for a day of reflection on one man's life, it seemed to me that everyone was enjoying themselves. But as night fell, I was taken back by the sheer mass of humanity that joined in the candlelight vigil that evening. The candles lit up all around me. My little candle seemed so insignificant. I mentioned it to a gentleman standing next to me. He smiled and said, Does not one candle in a room full of darkness make a bright light? I thought for a moment and replied, Yes, it does, yes. It does. He then said, sometimes too much light can be blinding. I stayed there through the vigil with my little candle in my hand. That stranger seemed friendly, but I felt a little uneasy in his presence. Why? I don't know. Anyway, after the vigil, the crowds dispersed. But all throughout the evening into the wee hours of morning, there was so much to see and especially hear. As a fan of Elvis, I wanted to do what I felt was right as respects his name and legacy. To me, it meant being there to keep the memory alive. I felt I was a small part of a bigger picture. Kind of like that little candle I held the previous night. Yes, by itself it gave little light, but together, with all those other Elvis fans, it contributed to a much bigger and brighter light. I guess that stranger gave me some food for thought. He did seem happy. I wish I had gotten his name. Oh well, what difference would it make? He probably was from out of state anyhow. Yeah, another J.B. probably. Wait a minute, what's wrong with me? I'm starting to sound like those people who were screaming at J.B. the day of Elvis' funeral back in 1977. I'd better take a chill pill. I was hoping J.B. and Becky Sue would be here this year. But according to J.B., he and Becky Sue would not be able to make it since they had pressing business. It seemed like something was happening to our friendship. This was the fifth straight year they were unable to make it. We began seeing less and less of each other. And now, with computers around, we resorted to emails to keep in touch. I wasn't that savvy when it came to computers, so staying in touch became harder. JB would send me information on some investigating he had completed that was in reference to our search for the truth about Elvis' death. But I started to become a little discouraged when he would place attachments and files that required downloading in his emails. All that computer jazz was foreign to me and made my job very difficult. JB suggested I take a course in computer fundamentals. <laughs> that was easy for him to say. But I had little money. I worked as a pickup truck driver for a small electrical contractor in Memphis. The pay was meager, to say the least, and I was barely getting along. 
Meanwhile, JB and his wife Becky were doing well with their careers. I had been to their home once in 1990 and it was absolutely magnificent. Yes, five bedrooms, four baths, a formal dining room, two fireplaces, tennis courts, in the grand swimming pool, and a host of domestics to care for their estate, all on 25 acres in beautiful West Virginia. Now me, I live in a rented room in Memphis. It works for me. Anyhow, the next day I decided to treat myself to breakfast out. No hot plate cooked top for me today. It was only a 20 minute walk to the fast food restaurant and I was going to treat myself to a big breakfast. Yep, I deserved it. Especially after attending such a beautiful memorial service. Why not continue the celebration? When I arrived at the restaurant, I marched up to that counter and told that young boy, uh, I want a big breakfast. I know it's probably no big thing to you all, but to me, this was the cat's meow. Let me tell you, I really enjoyed that meal. After dumping my tray of trash, I turned and whom did I see walking out of the restaurant but the man I had seen the night before at the candlelight vigil. It was the stranger. His words repeated in my ears. Does not one candle in a room full of darkness make a bright light? Sometimes too much light can be blinding. I just stood there, motionless, thinking.